bypass just came kicking in my front door. Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks so much to the developers for the review copy. We're going to review Redeemer. I expected maybe a Diablo light experience with guns and instead got John Wick's hench war addled second cousin, which is just fine. Unfortunately, this Unreal Engine 4 powered re release is suffering from a severe case of portitis, as we'll see in the graphics section. So, what is it all about exactly? Let's find out. You're presented with two game modes, Campaign and Arena, the latter of which allows you to fight through hordes and hordes of enemies alone or with a partner. The former can also be undertaken with a friend in local co-op, which is where I spent a good chunk of my time. The story goes that you've been living out your existence in the tranquil mountains, learning to forget the past and meditate upon the present and future. But it's not easy to change a man like me. Addicted to war, you struggle with letting go, and the one thing you are so adept at, violence, soon rears its ugly head with the opportunity to defend the place you now call home. Let's just say you don't exactly shy away from it. As the monastery burns around you, your journey begins. Control of the main protagonist is easy and, dare I say it, quite slick. Picture a twin stick shooter when you have a gun, and a brawler akin to, say, a Batman Arkham title, when in hand-to-hand -hand combat. With a basic kick and punch button combo that can be strung together to devastating effect and a counter button ripped right from the aforementioned series, the combat feels instantly familiar. Unlike the Dark Knight, you have no qualms about dispatching enemies using any means necessary. If you soften one up enough, a skull will appear over their head, at which time pressing the A button will end them. Oftentimes, the camera will pan down to give you a closer look as the claret flows. I particularly appreciated the no-nonsense tearing out of the throat. That does the trick nicely. But also, you can use these glowing environmental items to, uh, well, it's easier just to show you. I like the combat a lot and evading with a dedicated dodge roll is always appreciated, as is being able to pick up and hurl items or the dropped weapons of your foes. This then gives you more visceral ways of death bringing and has more damage before they break. This can then be further prolonged via the upgrade system. When you find a scroll, you're then prompted to upgrade a trait. Now unfortunately, they managed to make this entirely simple system just plain poor in terms of knowing what you can upgrade and when. It's just confusing when you're told to spend the points, but then there's almost no visual or audio feedback when you're choosing. You have a little exclamation mark, but that is only when you can actually choose a perk. When putting points into the areas, there's next to nothing. Trust me on this, it's just an odd implementation that should have been much easier to understand. It's not all hectic and full on though, there is a touch of stealth here. Stealth light, if you will. You can move the camera using a trigger to look ahead, but you're also given a handy indication of where enemies are around the periphery of the screen with these. But most importantly, they show which direction the enemy are facing, making it easy to creep up and silently-ish take them down in one move. The final aspect of the very fun combat system are the guns. As these are dropped, you can pick them up, and this is where the controls become a traditional twin stick with the right used for precise aiming. And it's also where John Wick comes in. I loved buttering up a couple of enemies before rolling over to a dropped weapon and just seamlessly being able to target and shoot in one fluid motion. Not only does that feel cool, but it keeps the flow of the combat going nicely. When a clip is empty, you'll throw the weapon aside and the melee continues. The earlier levels are quite linear with a few branching paths, but these are usually confined by enemy timed gates, requiring all to be killed before you can move on to the next. The latter levels have a little more variety within larger areas, but generally with one exit. The main difference between levels is the enemies you'll face. About a third of the way through the game, you're introduced to some of the more interesting ones but will also have unlocked some new combat mechanics that improve the combat further. My particular favorite is the disarmability. 
Sometimes this means taking the gun from an enemy and using it against them, while other times it means, well, this. Let me give you a hand. Don't worry though, he's harmless. Oof. All of this makes for a particularly enjoyable game, were it not for one huge and glaring issue the game currently has. You guessed it already, I'm sure, it's the performance. In some areas, the frame rate is appalling, and for a game that needs smoothness, this is a major negative to the enjoyment. I really feel at this stage there are some publishers who won't release games before they're ready. Take Devolver, for example, and then there are some who are going for the after release patch approach. Some levels are perfect, and others are shockingly bad, and as such the gameplay and controls fluctuate wildly with this. At its best, it's a great brawler come shooter if a touch by the numbers at times. Gameplay scores 16 out of 20, but not in this state it doesn't. It scores 14 out of 20, and the controls, well they would also be great, maybe a 17 out of 20, but not here. As it is right now, they're 14 out of 20 as well. I enjoyed the cinematic intro sequences and the gravelly toned protagonist puts on a decent enough performance. The temple of the vanishing star was supposed to be unreachable. I know I have said it already, but the game performance is just atrocious. It is such a shame as the animations and general feel of it are great. Shooting is slick and the color palette used is decent. Unfortunately, textures are a little bit of a mess as well and the blur is all too real in handheld. When you try to play with two players, the effect of everything is amplified. It's like that one extra character model tips the game over the edge and the lack of optimization just rears its ugly head time and time again. If you're watching this review after the inevitable performance patch or even a day one that makes all these issues and not an issue, then congratulations it's a great game bar that. Audio's still great, weapons pop and the crunches of a soldier's bones under your heel and the spray of claret that accompanies it make you forget for a moment the more woefully performing sections. Visuals score currently 10 out of 20, while the audio is unaffected and scores 16 out of 20. The game costs £24.99, €29.99 or $29.99 and that is an expensive price especially considering the state of the game right now. There are a good number of levels and the arena mode is a fun little distraction, but even then, this price is an ask. Just as we saw with the recent Saints Row, but perhaps even worse here, we have a premium price for a game that at its core is very good, but being released in a sometimes almost unplayable state, it's not okay. Nobody should buy the game like this. If they patch it, I will post out to all of you via Twitter and the community tab letting you know, but we have to stop buying games if they aren't optimized. It sends out the message that it's okay, and in my opinion it isn't, and at this price it really isn't. Value right now scores 5 out of 20. What a shame then, I really enjoy Redeemer as a game. It's not the greatest one ever, and the storyline is straight out of an 80s action sci-fi, but it's bloody fun when it's working well. Unfortunately, a sub 30 frames per second for the majority of the game holds it back, and I can only imagine on every other platform, it's a superior experience. In its current state, it receives a switch up score of 59%. Patched up, it would easily be in the 70s or maybe 80s. Thanks so much to our patrons, all things switch, all the time, keep it switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!